You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. It's great to have you joining me here today on this Motivation and Mindset Monday, where we are tackling the topic of how you see the world, because how you see the world ultimately becomes your life. And I want to explain this a little bit more in depth today, because a lot of people do not understand And they have never heard the concept of what you perceive becomes what you believe. So believe it or not, the way in which you see the world actually dictates more of what you will get. And that's a hard thing because there's so many people right now where at least in one or two areas of their life, they're looking to improve. But there's honestly very little chance they will improve or get out of that situation until they work on the mind, not just the body which we talk about almost every other day in the show, but you also have to work on the mindset. Now, the mindset will, in time, improve just like the body improves. And it honestly, it responds in the same way. And it responds with attention. But in order to give it attention, you have to know what you're working on. So if you're someone you know, looking to repair your car, well, if you're not a car mechanic and you lift the hood, you have no idea what you're looking at. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I lift the hood up to my car and I say, oh, there's an engine and I can find where the oil is, but that's pretty much it. Maybe the washer fluid. That's about it. Cars are not my thing. I like cars. They're nice. They get me from point A to point B, but I'm not a car person. However, what I need to do is when I have an issue, I need to be able to solve that. And since we are all the stewards of our body and our mind, it's very important for us that we begin to learn the science of healing body and mind. And today, what I want to do is I don't want to talk about just illness or dis-ease in the body. I want to talk about achieving anything you want in life. So if you're looking to improve your career or your finances, there's a reason why you're not there yet. If you're looking to improve your body, your weight, body transformation, there's a reason as well. Spirituality, relationships. Absolutely. And we're going to go into how we've been programmed to be in the certain mindset that we are today. Now, there's another nice part to this though, and it really is. And I didn't know this for quite some time, probably around my mid-20s. I was fortunate enough to be able to read some books that revolutionized my thinking. And I've tried to rack my brain. I'll probably have to do some, some hypnosis, but I've tried to rack my brain as to how I found my first book on studying the subconscious mind. And I honestly have no idea. But I wish I could figure out like, who was the person that told me about this? Because I had no one in my life, like no one in my life at all that talked about this. And I'm assuming that I read a book that simply mentioned a little bit about that. And it was a health-based book because I spent all my time in my early 20s, studying how to get well. And so there was most likely a mention of that. Then I went and grabbed the next book. That's why I tell people all the time, you don't even know what to do next. You don't even know the next book to read until you finish the one that you're doing right now or get started on one. You know, in, the, in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, I talk about so many different things because I tell people, this is a book which will give you the jumping off point to then look at toxins and emotions and mindset and detoxification and stress and cortisol and all different things. But I want you to continue your education. And I want that to continue for the rest of your life. And it doesn't have to be all things at the same time. Work on one goal right now. If you need to move yourself forward in your career or your finances, because then everything else will better fall into place, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not selfish. It's not greedy. It's none of those things. And I'm going to talk about that next. If what you need to do right now 
in order to improve for your family, for your career, for all of those things, to get well health-wise, then yes, go all in on that. Not from a point of stress, but from a point of healing. So what I'm saying right now is go all in. Pick one thing to improve on. You can spend the rest of your life mastering it, but get to a point where you're well, right? That you're financially well, relationships are well, spirituality is well. All of those things are where they should be. And then you can move on to the next topic. But here's the thing. When I say your perception of the world is what you become in life, and that's because I believe and I've seen it play out and I've also studied. Remember, growing up, this was not a part of my vocabulary. So I've studied brilliant, brilliant minds out there. And there are so many brilliant people. I mean, there really are. And I've I've mentioned them over and over and over on the podcast. Today, a lot of the work that I'm speaking about on this show comes from Dr. Bruce Lipton. And I was fortunate enough to read his work around 2000 and I want to say seven, 2008. And I, I love his work. I think he's a great guy and he was ahead of his time for sure. His book was called The Biology of Belief. And so what we're basically talking about this, and I'm not going to get all into the biology and how it changes your cells and actually your DNA can be restructured based on your mindset. What I want to talk about today and what I typically try to do is talk about practical things that you can do in your own life. But when I say what you perceive becomes what you believe, you have to understand that your beliefs are what control your life. And this is because you are literally on autopilot. 95% of your life. And when I heard this, I said, I just don't believe that. I don't believe the statistic because I'm thinking all day long. But here's the thing. Your mind's jumping from one topic to another topic. I've heard the statistics. You're typically interrupted six to 10 times with even in just one minute. But what really struck me, and then I got it and I believed it, was it was either Dr. Joe Dispenza or it was Dr. Bruce Lipton who said, think about it. When you are driving and you're on the highway and you're going 60 miles an hour or so, your mind will wander off. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it certainly happened to me. Your mind will wander off. And 10 seconds later, a minute later, 10 miles later, you'll look back at the road and you're like, oh, where where was the last five minutes or 10 minutes? You were in your daydream, right? You were in your thoughts, but you didn't crash. You stayed in your lane, you braked when needed, you moved with the curves of the road. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but it's happened to me many times. It's one of the reasons why I don't actually love to drive, believe it or not. So my wife drives everywhere. She enjoys driving. I don't enjoy driving. I'm always kind of in my own head, like having daydreams and thoughts. I'm definitely a daydreamer. And I do that a lot when driving. But again, knock on you know my table right here you want to be superstitious. I have that and I come back and I say, wow. And, and I've never really realized it until I heard someone talking about that. I say, yeah, how did I actually not crash while being in a daydream for at least a minute or two? I drove that whole time, the whole time, but I wasn't paying attention consciously. So my subconscious was the program and is programmed. It's basically your subconscious is a it's a supercomputer and it's your nervous system and it's telling my body what to do. That is the subconscious program that's running that I'm not even aware of. So when I do daydream, the car is still driving on its own. It's not an automated car. It's not a Tesla, right? It's me still driving, but not paying attention. And that's the amazing thing. But that is how we go through our life. We've already programmed our subconscious. And typically, it's happened from our early childhood, typically before the age of eight, right around seven and before. And you may have grown up, well, not you may have, you absolutely grew up in an environment that has made you what you are today. Now, you are welcome at any time to keep some of those programs and to rewrite some of those programs. And I invite you today to at least rewrite a few of those. And that's because your parents... I'm sure they did the absolute best they could, because most people do, with where they were at in life, and also what they were taught from their parents. And I'm almost guaranteeing you that your parents didn't know a lot about what I'm talking about today. So let's say you're 30 years old or you're 50 years old. You're looking at a couple generations, and you know, let's say you're 50, 
And your grandparents grew up in like the Great Depression, if you're in the United States or, or something like that, right? So there might have been a lot of talk around scarcity. And you might have heard things like, well, you know, money doesn't come easy, money doesn't grow on trees, all of those things. And so then you're believing, well, like you're just not destined to have a good amount of money and you're not destined to do all of these nice things that you would like to do that cost money, right? So you grew up a mindset that, okay, well, if I'm going to get money, it's probably going to be taken away as well. Like I'm, I'm just going to get money and then it's going to go somewhere else. And that could be a specific mindset you have right now. And a lot of people do. And I had that for quite a long time, you know, for sure. So it's one thing to look at. Another one is like, well, work has to be really hard. You know, so like work has to be a daily, you know, grudging effort. And, and that's the thing. Maybe you saw uh, your mother or your father or someone in the family that you had an emotional attachment to come home every day, hard day's work, uh, you know, really dislike their work. And you saw that and you realized, well, okay, well, that's what I have to do then when I grow up. And so that's also something to look at. Nor maybe you had a really good, or, you know, a really good parent that showed you well, they love their work or whatever. And so then maybe you love your work today. Like that, again, it works both ways, not just bad, of course. We're just talking about the negatives because those are some of our perceptions. I'm going to help you figure out how to find those in just a second. I just want to give you a couple more examples. Other people, like again, parents aren't even aware of it. And that's why I'm glad that I waited to my 30s to have children. I just didn't feel, for me personally, I was ready in my 20s. I wasn't mature enough in terms of what I needed to overcome, mostly mindset-wise, and certainly energy-wise too, in order to have children. There are things programmed inside of us that we will then just simply pass on to the next generation. I've seen a lot of people, you know, they get passed on this, that all relationships are hard and they all come to an end. You know, like what if you saw your parents uh, divorce and maybe divorce multiple times or you saw them in a bad relationship? It may be something that's being perpetuated to this day. Again, subconsciously. And these are difficult topics to talk about. And they're difficult topics to even wrap your head around or potentially admit is happening in your own life. Because we all want to deny it. But my goal is to help you get as well on every level. Emotional, physical, spiritual, everything in terms of your well-being. I'm just going to give you one or two more examples. No matter what everyone in our family does, they may say, everyone's overweight. Or it's just everyone in our family has high blood pressure. Everyone gets high cholesterol. Everyone gets breast cancer. Everyone gets migraines. Everyone gets insert whatever you want for your dis-ease of the body. I've heard this over and over. It's not true, but I've heard it over and over. Even if you get it, it doesn't mean that you have to live with it. And then the, the, my favorite one is this. is just overall premise in life is that whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And they even have a, a name for it. They call it Murphy's Law. And this one, to me, it's just one of the most harmful. So it's like, okay, well, you know, things are going well. Well, something's going to go wrong next. You're just waiting for, as they say, that other shoe to drop, right? It's just, okay, I know, yeah, things are going well. Well, what's going to happen next? They can't allow themselves to actually enjoy life. They don't allow themselves for things to go well. So things do get well, but then it eventually gets taken away. They're in this massive roller coaster in life. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you're never going to have things that aren't great happen to you in your life. I, I say that over and over. That is part of the human experience. It's part of human being. But what you have to understand is our job is to ride out as long as we can all of the good, everything that's going great. And then some of the things that are negative, simply reframing. What can I learn from this experience? And other issues that are just not great, right? They're just not good. How quickly can we overcome those? So now let's say I have something stressful happen during the day. My goal is always get to bed a little bit earlier. Don't dwell on it. Journal on it if needed. Go to bed. Tomorrow's another day. And that's a reprogramming. This was today. I'm not taking it into tomorrow. I'm not going to dwell on that because it's not serving me. Hopefully right now, again, you can start to think of things that you were programmed with. But again, I want you to know that you are not a victim to these genetics. No matter where you grew up, a lot of people will say, well, I grew up in a poor community and everyone was poor and that's how it worked. But the case is always this. 
I would say that is absolutely true, except that we always know that at least one or two people make it out from that environment. Or there was a very a family with a lot of turmoil and a lot of trauma. And one person has made it out from that. The others are still suffering. Well, I look at it as, and there's a scenario for everything, right? And I'm not saying these are good scenarios. But I look at it as this. If one person can do it, there's a way to do this for everyone. There's a system. And that is our beliefs. So we are not victims to our genetics. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we can actually manipulate our genes. This is called epigenetics. And we know that genes actually change over generations. We know that a grandmother's genes, so put it this way, like the grandmother, will pass them on for two generations. So if you're a mom, listen to this, your genes, the, the partic- again, they're going to be handed down for a lot longer than that, but they're going to be ingrained for most likely your daughter or son and their son or daughter. And it's an amazing thing to look at that you are literally passing on yourself, good and bad. But the nice thing is this, is that all of those genes, no matter what you pass on, can be turned off, they can be turned on, and they can be manipulated by the environment. The biggest thing that changes your environment is your perception of your environment. Because we can all look at the events of our life in different ways. We just have to know what we're even looking at. So if you want to know what you're looking at, you have to begin to figure out your most dominant thoughts. So what are the things that you think about on a subconscious level the majority of the day? And I've said it before, but it's not hard to see. And that all you have to do is look at your life right now. Because you are the sum of all of the thoughts you've ever had, which led to a host of feelings which began actions, which eventually culminated in where you're at right now. The good and the bad. Trust me, it's not all bad. It really isn't. And maybe it's not all good. And that's okay because you've got a lot of life left to live, which means that you've got things to work on. And that's how I look at it. It's, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. We get to work on something, right? Because as far as I see it, most people get bored when they don't have goals to achieve, when they're not going after something in life. So if you're a little bit lower mood right now, if you're a little bit depressed, if you're a little bit just kind of bored with life, apathetic, I need you to set a goal that's worthwhile for yourself, someone else of a service. Do something that wakes you up in the morning. But the best thing is if you can work on yourself first, because the better you become, the better you are for others. So if you don't know what your most dominant thoughts are, here's an easy way to do it. Hang around with your family, your parents for the most part, your siblings, yes, but mainly your parents, and begin to just see and listen for their speak, their emotions, their feelings, and their thoughts. Because most people have never worked in themselves, which means your parents are probably going to be a lot like they were when you were a kid under seven years old that you don't even remember because you're in that theta state of mindset, where you're just in a hypnotic state. You really are. And I just wish they taught this to parents, and I wish they taught this to everyone. Your kids are just absorbing. And you were a kid at one time. So, but again, you don't know what was going on really before the age of seven. And, and at that, the very most, right? You're being programmed. So at least you can go back, you can say, okay, how do my parents talk now? What are their beliefs? What are their beliefs about relationships, about finances and career? Or did that change? Maybe they're doing better or worse now. So it could have been different, right? What are their thoughts about uh, their overall health and their body? But about spirituality? All of these things matter. I mean, they really do. And then you can begin to say, oh, do I maybe, because again, do not judge. You're not there to judge your parents, right? They're doing the best and they did the best they can. Everyone is. Nobody's perfect. So go back and say, though, do I have any of those same beliefs? And then ask yourself that, meditate on it, sit quietly, maybe you'll get the answer. But another way to look is just say, is that manifested in my life? Whether I believe it or not, if my parents had issues around finances, do I have issues around finances today? 
Ask yourself that. If they had issues around health, do you currently have issues around health? Same with weight gain. Same with spirituality. Like you're basically, I look at spirituality at this way. Do you feel connected? Do you feel like you have purpose? Do you feel like you have a place in this world? Are you connected with the world around you in terms of nature? That's important to look at that way. Or do you feel like it's a constant struggle and battle? And then the last one is simply looking at your overall relationships. Look at that. What does that look like today? And with this, you can start to develop more self-awareness. But again, be gentle on yourself. Be gentle on others. The more you judge others, the more you end up judging yourself. It's basically like rating others, like, oh, they're good or bad, right? I've talked about that. Then you're judging yourself. Because remember, if your mindset is on judgment, it hurts you more than it hurts anyone else. Especially since we don't mainly share our judgment with others. Although on social media, I mean, the abuse that's on social media today is absolutely ridiculous. People just jumping to conclusions. I mean, even like I see it with people in my my company as well. Meaning like everyone we hire, I mean, that literally we, we have a extensive hiring process. They're good people. They're great people. And then people are like, oh, this person, you have to relax when you're looking at other people. If you live your life in constant stress and judgment and anger, you're only going to get more of that. It's what you are becoming. So what I want you to do is this. Listen to what your thoughts are saying and what your gut is feeling. When you begin to bring up one of your goals for life, let's say it's about losing weight. What are your thoughts around that? Is your first thought, oh, I've tried everything. It's not going to happen. Well, I've been successful before, but I always slip back. Is that what your mind automatically goes to? That's a dominant thought. Or when you say, ah, oh, you know, I'm excited about losing weight, you don't feel it. You actually feel a tightness in your gut. That is your nervous system. That's your nervous system letting you know what you just spoke is not in congruence with how you actually feel. And I'll tell you right now, in order for you to truly achieve any goal and make it stick, you need congruence between the mind and body. The nervous system and the brain which is the subconscious and the conscious mind. And the subconscious is so much more powerful because it's running when you're not thinking about it. So if your conscious mind is focused on your goal, well, you're more likely to achieve it, right? But 95% of the day, you're not focused on that goal. That's why I also believe in mantras, just saying it over and over. It's why I talked about in my book that saying by Dr. Kuye is... Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And you might say like, well, that's crazy to say that over and over. It's not. Because what does it do? It keeps your conscious mind focused on how you're improving. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. What what phrase am I using? It's already done. That's the tense. It's already been done. Every day, that's today, in every way, it could be anything, I'm getting better and better. It's already happening. It's being done. And you can use that for any part of your life. And you say it over and over. Well, what does that do? Well, that's the only way you reprogram the subconscious mind. You reprogram it by an event that was so impactful that it could replace, or I should say, rewrite a memory of, from childhood. That's possible. A very charged event or repetition and, and potentially hypnosis as well. But that's not something that I'm an expert in by any means. So repetition. Repetition of going after your goals, that is what that is the way most people are going to be able to reprogram their genes. We'll talk more about repetition in the future. I've talked about it on previous Motivation and Mindset Mondays, but it's simply working on a daily basis. Not every other day, but a daily basis towards your goals and not in a stressful manner. But if your goal, and this is why I'm so big on reading, if your goal is to move forward in life, pick something to read on every day. 10 pages in the morning when you wake up, 10 minutes in the morning when you wake up, 10 minutes at lunch, and 10 minutes before bed. That will get you approximately three pages at each sitting. That's about 10 pages for most people per day. And that's a book a month. If you're not reading a book a month, it's hard to say that you are fully committed 
to what you want to achieve. Because here's the thing, the amount of books you read doesn't necessarily matter, although you want that knowledge. But what matters is this, is that in the morning when you wake up, you're moving, you're just moving out of the theta state to the beta state. It's a great way to absorb your defenses are down. Your subconscious is open to new information. Read it, but it's also the way to set the tone for the day, right? Positive mindset about what you want to achieve. Then you might have lost it through the morning. All right, pick back up at lunch. Read, okay? All right, now we're reset. We're back on our goals. And then end of the day, put it in your mind before you go to bed. That is a great way to keep your mind focused on what you do want and off of what you don't want. Because too many of us are focused on all the negatives of what we don't want. Well, the only way to really do that is not to give our attention to what you don't want, because you'll just get more of that. But it's to put it back on what you do want. That's always more important. So you don't say, oh, I don't want to be sick anymore. That You're focused on being sick. You say, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. I'm feeling better and better. That is what we put our mind back on, something positive that we do want to focus on rather than not the negative that we will still get more of. So I want to pull this all together for you right now, and that's this, is that your perception of the world is what you eventually get and become in life. That is how it works. You get what you believe in. It does not happen overnight. The negatives don't happen overnight. The positives don't necessarily happen overnight. But you're going to get what you believe in, and that's because this. You won't work towards anything you don't believe in. That's a bigger part to it. So if you ever thought, and that thought is, I don't think that I can achieve that, how hard do you think you're really going to work towards that? If you don't believe you can lose the 40 pounds, do you think you're really going to put a lot of effort into exercise, nutrition, functional medicine, detoxification, sleep, balancing hormones, cleaning up gut-based issues? Probably not. Probably not. But if you do believe that you can achieve it, well, now anything's possible. So that's why, again, I'm a fan of listening to podcasts, watching videos, reading the books, because you get to experience new possibilities. Maybe you don't wholeheartedly believe in the beginning, but the more you get into it, you realize there are a lot of people just like me getting results that I want. So maybe, just maybe, I'm not a victim to my genetics. Once that thought begins to enter your mind, all possibilities are open. And in that state, that is when you can begin to work towards your goals. And as you have that inspiration, get out that piece of paper, write down your goals, get excited about it, feel that feeling well up inside of you that it will begin to replace the negative mindset, the negative feelings that are holding you back from the life that you deserve. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's Motivation and Mindset Monday. I appreciate you. And as always, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.